You're listening to the Staging Sips Podcast with Lori Fisher. This podcast is dedicated to helping real estate staging CEOs build healthy businesses that grow, flow, and thrive. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so happy to be here with you, especially this week because I have been so sick. Oh my goodness. Uh, You probably still hear it in my voice. So hopefully I don't sneeze, cough, uh, (laughs) sniffle during today's episode. But it really brought up for me the idea of how lucky I am as a business owner to have a team in place that knows how to run this business without me. Um, because I definitely have been down for the count. So that's a whole other podcast episode about creating redundancy in your um, your team. But there are so many episodes devoted to hiring the right people, training, creating a training library for your team, all the things to help you make yourself redundant to duplicate yourself. But today, what I want to talk about is actually another kind of taking time off in your business. And this is the planned time off in your business. So think holidays and vacations. Now, this is going to drop a little bit uh, maybe late for those of you around the world who celebrate uh, Christmas and things like that. But um, this can really help you as you go into the new year, begin to plan out time if it's not something that you tend to be thoughtful about in your business. And It's really important to plan for time off for holidays and vacations, even if it's just a team of one. So this is obviously a podcast about creating a system and a process around that. So that's for that Accelerate business owner who is routinely booking business and is at the point where they're probably needing to add some team to help them or they're in process. They've got a team and just want the team to be operating more functionally, more efficiently. But this is also a great topic for those of you who are growth business owners who are uh, in that phase of beginning to get clients and build traction. And you're probably in your zero to 20 to 25 to 30 K range of um, revenue. And you want to look ahead to see what you can be thinking about, what you can wrap systems around. Because in those in that growth phase, you're really just learning how to do everything and kind of see what works for you and your business. And then once you kind of get a feel for that, then you want to create actual scaffolding and structure around it in the form of systems so that you can begin to bring team in so that you've got replicatable, is that a word? Replicatable, replicable? I don't know, one of those (laughs) things in your business. So let's dive in to what it looks like to intentionally plan for time off. I mean, the beauty of owning our own businesses is that we really get to decide when we work with clients and and when we are shut down. And now the caveat to this too is that I understand if you are a solo business owner or you're early in developing a team, you may still need to check in on your time off. You may have things arise that you can't delegate to somebody else, or you can't maybe wholly shut down your business when you want to take a vacation or something like that. I I totally understand that. But the aspiration is for you to have a business that you own, not a business that owns you. So this is part of getting you to that place. Um, So in our business, we have uh, time off systems. We've got quarterly systems where we do various activities and plan out our days off. And what I'm going to share with you today is part of our Q4 system. But then you can also have a vacation system, which I have, because if I didn't have that system, I would never get certain things done, like changing my voicemail, (laughs) my, my voicemail message, turning it off when I get back, that kind of thing. So I need a vacation system as well. But let's do this. Let's dive into how you can get started thinking about this. So the best thing is, is that you plan out your time off. So in our Q4 process, in the month of December, we look at all of the the national holidays coming up for our country, and we start marking our team off for that. So we want to decide right away which holidays we're taking off. We want to decide, are we taking off, you know, between Christmas and New Year's here in the States because a lot quiets down. 
Is that something we feel comfortable doing? Is that something we want to offer to our team as just time to be with their family? We want to decide, you know, are we celebrating in our country now? Um, Juneteenth has become a holiday that is a newer holiday. Not everybody is celebrating or closing for that federal holiday in our business. We do want to honor that. Um, It's a big flipping deal to me. Uh, So we are, we as a team decided last year that Juneteenth is going to be one of the days that we stop and we pause and we don't book appointments. One of the other things that we had decided was that not not that the team is off, but we aren't we as a policy, we realized after years in business, we are not going to book new clients the week before we go into a holiday for specifically vacant staging. And the reason for that is that we um, tend to get more questions about what we've done with new clients and the process is just a little bit harder. So it makes that time going into the holiday much more challenging. So we will always defer those clients to right after a holiday versus in the crunch lead up to the holiday. But that's because it was planned and thought about. So when we do that, what happens is not only are we treating our business like an actual business and not kind of a hobby business or what my business coach Toby likes to call it jobby. (laughs) Um, But we are create, we are operating as an actual business. And then what we can do is we, it gives us the opportunity to commute, communicate early and often with our key stakeholders, our clients, our team, anybody that would be impacted by our closures for those particular days. You can also, from a mindset perspective, because you know I'm all about wrapping mindset into all of the work that we do, because sometimes that is the biggest hurdle that we have in achieving the results that we want, is that we begin to get comfortable with the idea that we actually do close our business on certain days. We are just like any other business that would close for holiday. And sometimes that just takes a, a the it puts us in a place of neutrality. We decided it ahead of time and we're going to honor that ahead of time. We're going to take steps to honor that ahead of time. So like I mentioned, our business is closed for all the major holidays. We're closed the Friday after Thanksgiving and we are closed the week before Chris, between Christmas and New Year's. That is just our standard. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you are planning extended vacations. So for me, um, the one of the reasons why I hired a team member, my first couple of team members, was because I was planning a vacation that was going to be two weeks long with my family over the summer. We had that planned out so I knew I would be away so that I could communicate early and often to my clients that I would not be available. But we have a great assistant, um, Lisa, who is amazing and available. So you want to just think about those kinds of dates. Um, just as an aside, in relationship to all of these things, one of the best practices that I may not have spoken about in depth is setting up a business line that's separate from your cell phone. And this is really important no matter what stage of business that you're at. And it's not very expensive to do this. We use eVoice, which is a Google um, tool, and eVoice can be forwarded to any number you choose you can um, have your voicemails forwarded to your email inbox so that you don't have to actually get on your phone. You can read the transcripts right from your inbox. And they have plans that start as low as $14 a month. So it makes it a really reasonable, nice choice so that you don't have people texting your cell phone, calling your cell phone. You can really put that through a filter. Um, so that's one best practice when it comes to taking time out of your business. The other one is setting business operational hours. So again, if you decide that your operational hours are from you know eight to five or whatever that is, if those are your operational hours, that's when all communication gets answered. So that way, when you have a voicemail, an outgoing voicemail, you can say, we Um, Any calls received after our our regular business hours of 8 to 5 p.m. will be answered the next business day. This This way, you're setting up a boundary for yourself, but you're also setting expectations for your clients that you will not be reaching out and answering back texts at all hours of the day. Because as we know, real estate happens 24-7 and realtors 
uh, are, you know, just trained, I think, to send communications immediately in the moment when they need it, when they think about it, not to, you know, defer it. So you'll get texts and calls evenings and weekends because that's their business hours. But that doesn't mean that you need to respond during their business hours. You can respond during your uh, your business hours. So that is a really great best practice to have. So that's a little uh, an aside slash soapbox I want to share. But it's really important when it comes to having time off in your business that you already begin to train your clients that you have operational hours and train yourself more importantly that you have operational hours and that you have a protocol for responding back to messages. So if we do that on the regular, in the short term, it doesn't make it such a big deal when you take time out of your business and you are not really at all for days if need be. So here are some things we can do to prepare your business. Here are the things that we do to prepare our business for our time, our times off. So like I said, we plan them out and then we add these days off to our team calendar. And we do this, like I said, we're doing this right now in December 2023 in preparation for December, I mean, for uh, January, you know, the year 2024. So we block all team members off so there's no availability. So when someone goes to our Acuity calendar to schedule an appointment, they will not see appointments during those dates. That's really, really important, um, especially if you have a scheduling app, you don't want people getting on your calendar accidentally. And then you've got to call them and explain that your calendar wasn't updated and all that. Just get it done now. And again, vacations are going to be something that may come up more organically. They may come up a little more last minute, but at least for the major holidays, when you know you're taking time off, you can get this done immediately. The next thing that we do is we create and schedule all of the emails that will notify our clients of our upcoming days off throughout the new year. So again, let's just look at holidays that would be coming up in January. So we have um, MLK, then we I think we have President's Day weekend, then we there's Memorial Day and um, Juneteenth and Fourth of July and you know just go through that list. So what we do is we create an email that goes out two weeks ahead of that that day off just to let clients know of our holiday availability and we just share that we are um, not scheduling appointments you know in honor to to honor the holiday. Um, you know, we let them know that. Then we send follow-up email the next week. All of this can be automated in your CRM. And if you don't have a CRM, uh, customer relationship management tool, <laughs> you, we need to talk. Um, but if you do, you can schedule all of this ahead of time so that you're doing it all in a batch format and it's done for the year. So like I said, we get two notifications of our holiday schedule. The next thing that we do is more kind of in the moment. When we get close to those dates, we will let our clients know that we have available we have dates that are not available for booking. So when you have somebody who reaches out to you for a vacant staging or a consultation or something like that, and you know you're getting close to the holidays, and you're having that in a phone conversation or an email, and they haven't gone to your scheduling link, or if you're still, you know, if you don't have a scheduling link yet, you just want to communicate that. For planning purposes, you just want to let them know that we are not booking appointments on, you know, the the upcoming X date. So if you want to get on our calendar, you know, let's plan and think about do you want to get on ahead of that day or after that day? We just want to treat it like we are, you know, it is normal to take time off in our business and we are grounded and neutral about that time off. There is no apologizing for it. It's just what it is, and they have to plan accordingly. Um, so that's another thing that you want to do the closer you get. When you are about to take extended time off, this is especially for extended time off. So if that's a vacation or like I said, that week before between Christmas and New Year's, we like to reach out to our clients via slide dial and email to let them know that um, their projects are on the books for when we return. This way there is no question. Like people aren't reaching out to us during the vacation to say, hey, I forgot. Are we on the schedule for X date? Blah, blah, blah. Like we want to do that ahead of time. It takes no time at all to zip out um, those phone calls and slide dials specifically to go right into someone's voicemail. You don't even need to talk to somebody, which is fantastic. So we like to do that as well. 
Um, if you have projects installed around the time, you know, maybe a month before you're leaving for you know, a vacation or something, you just want to make sure, I mean, standard practice anyway is if you are, you know, that you are in your D stage date is coming up, you obviously two weeks ahead of time want to send a reminder that, you know, their contract is coming to a close and um, that they need to schedule their D stage. And if they don't, that you will automatically renew them for another month. Like that's standard practice. But you also want to reach out to people to just let them know, hey, just a heads up, um, we are closed between Christmas and New Year's. So if you have a D, if you have at all any potential that this uh, property needs to be destaged, we just want you to plan accordingly, knowing that we will not have any staff available at that time. <clears throat> so just make sure you're thinking about those things, anything that might um, potentially come up. You want to change the outgoing message on your voicemail to reflect the upcoming days not in operation. So this is just simple, adding a reminder to your calendar to change your voicemail. And I do that in the form of just, I actually create an email for myself that I schedule to go out. And I do this right in Gmail because they have the send later op, you know, option and you can set a date and time that you want it to do to remind you. So that's what I do. I just send a reminder that's, that says change voicemail to uh, tell people you'll be out of the office. Um, it, when you have that message, your voicemail, you want to let them know who to contact if there is an, an emergency, what are the days that you're not in operation, when you will begin to return phone calls. I usually say that I'm returning a day after I actually home so that I have one more day of admin to start to catch up on phone calls. And people are usually surprised because they thought I wasn't going to be back <laughs> for another day. So that's kind of like my little hack. Um, you want to add the dates that you're closed, especially for extended days, to your email signature. It's an easy way to, again, communicate early, often, on the regular. You also want to make sure that you're creating and scheduling an out-of-office message in your email inbox. In Gmail, that's a really easy thing to do. You can set it up. We just have a template, and then we change the dates. We change, if we need to, change the emergency contact and when we'll be returning phone calls. And then you can schedule that to turn on at a specific date and end on a specific date. <clears throat> so all really nice to be done. The other thing is you can also create a text message auto reply. And I'm linking to the setup for that in show notes because it's a little bit tricky based on if you've got Android or iPhone or something like that. But there's a really easy way that you can set up an automatic reply in your text messages to let somebody know that you are uh, not responding to phone calls or emails for the next three days and if there's an emergency to contact so-and-so. So there's like lots of ways that you can prepare. But as you see here, here's a list of several. So now it's just a matter of creating a system around that. And the way that you create a system around that is that you start adding these items to a, in our case, we've got our Q4 uh, scheduling the days off, and we have all of those steps added into our Asana program about blocking off the time calendar, creating the two e emails to go out and scheduling them, scheduling them in Aweber for each of the holidays that will be um, closed. Then we have um, set up the reminder email to contact all all active clients to let them know that we aren't um, going to be booking or destaging during those certain dates. Um, we, you know, have the templated email to say, send out the confirmation email about all projects. Like we have all of that written out in a system. So it just be have all of that written out in a system. So it just be made it throughout the year. You like kind of forget. I always crack up when I get the automated email that says, change your voicemail. I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> I forget that I've even done it. So it's really fantastic to begin to think about these things. So while you've got some time off, this is a great, if you're celebrating Christmas and taking time off, or if you've got the slow time in your business, here's something that you can do to duplicate yourself, automate yourself, and all the good things throughout the rest of the year. So I'd love to hear it if you have other ideas that you use in your business, um, you know, moving forward to get, um, time off on your calendar. I'd love to hear it. So definitely reach out to me on Instagram.
Instagram. You can find me at Rethink Home or at the Staging Business School. And that is a new Instagram profile for us. So join me over there. I'd love to see you. Come pop in and say hi at Staging Business School on Instagram. Um, we're beginning to grow that account and grow the content over there. And I'd love to see you in there. And um, that's what I've got for you for the week. That is my sip for you the week. I am so pleased that I didn't cough or hack my way through it. And I hope that you have a wicked good week and I will see you next week on Sips. Thank you so much for listening to the Staging Sips podcast. If you love what you've learned here today, please take a minute to rate and review it so more staging business owners can find us. And if you want to learn more about how to market and grow your staging business more strategically, I'd love to see you join us inside of the Rethink You Accelerate Mentorship Program. It is open enrollment. And you can get more details at rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash rethink you. Would love to see you inside.